Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan coming to you from my office again with another step one question review. As always, these questions are sent to me by students. So let's jump right into today's question. So the question says that microbiologists are studying carbohydrate metabolism in two strains of E. coli, a wild type and a mutant. Both strains grow on lactose containing media. Each strain is then cultured on a glucose only media. Colonies from each strain are evaluated for production of beta-galactosidase. Wild-type colonies produce only trace amounts of beta-galactosidase. Mutant strains, however, produce large amounts of beta-galactosidase. Additional testing reveals that the variant strain contains a mutation that inhibits binding of a protein to its regulatory sequence. In which of the following locations did the mutation most likely occur? And the answer choices are activated protein cap binding site, operator locus, promoter region, activated protein cap gene, and RNA polymerase cistron. All right, well, first of all, let me say that the wording of this question is just awful. I mean, it is so confusing. The only way they could have made this question any more confusing is if they'd written it in Egyptian hieroglyphics. Half the battle here is just figuring out what the heck they are talking about. But let's see if we can break it down. So. It says that there are two strains of the bacteria E. coli, a wild type, and wild type is the term we usually use for the normal type of bacteria found in nature, and then there's a mutant form of the E. coli. And they tell you that both strains grow on lactose-containing media, and then each strain is cultured on a glucose-only media. Well, when you hear them talking about E. coli and bacteria growing on lactose or glucose media, you should right away think of the lac operon. That's what this question is testing. So we'll talk about the lac operon in detail in a minute, but if you don't know, it's a sequence of genes found in bacteria that become active to metabolize lactose. But the genes only become active if two things are present. First of all, there has to be lactose available and there has to be no glucose. If these two things aren't present, the bacteria cannot metabolize lactose. And the idea here is that bacteria evolved to preferentially metabolize glucose. That's what they always wanna use for fuel. They will only use lactose if, first of all, there's no glucose around, and secondly, there is lactose. When those two things occur in nature, then these genes become active to produce enzymes to metabolize lactose. So that's what the lac operon is. All right, so let's keep reading the question. So it says that colonies from each strain are evaluated for production of beta-galactosidase. Well, to answer this question, you have to know that beta-galactosidase is one of the enzymes required to metabolize lactose. So what they're telling you here is that colonies of each strain are evaluated for whether or not the lac operon has been turned on. And it's very hard to know that. You have to have memorized that this is an enzyme used to metabolize lactose. They then tell you that the wild type, the normal colonies found out in nature, produce only trace amounts of beta-galactosidase. This makes sense, right? They're growing the colonies on a glucose-only media. So the lac operon should be shut off. The cells should not be producing any of the enzymes like beta-galactosidase necessary for metabolizing lactose. They then tell you that mutant strains, however, produce large amounts of beta-galactosidase. This is wrong. They shouldn't be doing that. The mutant strains are still using the lactose metabolizing genes, even though they're in glucose-only media where they should shut down the production of enzymes for metabolizing lactose. They then have this super confusing sentence, additional testing reveals that the variant strain contains a mutation that inhibits binding of a protein to its regulatory sequence. My goodness, that is hard to understand. But let's see if we can figure out what they mean. So they're talking about the variant strain, which means the mutant strain. They've changed the name from mutant to variant strain, which that alone makes this a confusing sentence. And then they tell you that it has a mutation that inhibits binding of a protein to its regulatory sequence. So basically what they're telling you here is that a protein that should shut down the lac operon has failed to do so in the mutant colonies. And they're asking you where that most likely occurred. Okay, so before we jump into the answer choices, let's look at the section in First Aid for the Boards on the lac operon. The lac operon's been in First Aid for the Boards forever. I remember it being in the book in the 90s when I took this exam. It's fairly low yield information, which we'll talk about later. But nevertheless, all the information on this slide you can find in first aid for the boards about the lac operon. So let's start by looking at this cartoon on the left side of the screen. So an operon is a series of genes that are transcribed together. And there are three genes in the lac operon. They all code for enzymes that the bacteria needs to metabolize lactose, including the enzyme beta-galactosidase. 
Well, the only way that this whole sequence of genes is going to be transcribed is if two things are present. First of all, this repressor protein here has to be pulled away. And the only way it gets pulled away is if lactose is present. Lactose gets metabolized into an intermediate called allolactose that binds this repressor protein and pulls it off of the gene so that it can be transcribed. So that's one thing that must be true for this operon to work. The second thing that has to be true is there can't be glucose around. If there is glucose around, it will inhibit this enzyme here, and it will not allow this cap protein to bind to this cap site, which is the second thing required. So big picture here, we need two things for this gene to operate. There has to be binding of the cap protein to the cap site, and the repressor protein has to be pulled away. If both of those things happen, then all these genes will get transcribed, and both of those things are only gonna happen when you have low glucose and lactose available, like shown here on the slide. So if we go back to the question, remember they're growing E. coli on glucose-only media, so the LAC operon should not be working, but it is in the mutant colonies. And the reason it's working in the mutant colonies is because they have a mutation that inhibits binding of a protein to its regulatory sequence. So if we go back to this slide, this is the situation we have in the experiment. We have high glucose with lactose unavailable. And what should happen is the lac genes should not be expressed, but they are being expressed. That's what the question's telling you. In the mutant strain, they are being expressed, even though we have this situation here. And the cause is that some protein can't bind to its regulatory sequence. So it must be this repressor protein, because that's what should be keeping this process shut down in this setting right here, but it's not happening. So the problem must be with the repressor protein, it's unable to bind, therefore the mutation must be in the operator site. There's some mutation there such that the repressor protein does not bind, and therefore when you get this sequence here, you still get transcriptions of the genes, even though you should not. And so if we go back to the question, we can see that choice B says the operator locus, and that is the answer to the question. Now, having shown you all that, the first thing I have to say about this question is I think it's way too hard and I don't think you'll ever see anything like this on the step one exam. In order to answer this question, you basically have to have this whole thing here memorized and I don't think that's worth your time. Most of you will not get any questions about the lac operon on your exam. It's not very high yield. Those of you who do get a question will get at most one question. And more than likely, it's gonna be some general question asking you to understand that the lac operon works when lactose is available and there's low glucose, maybe something about gene repression, they're not gonna expect you to have memorized this entire structure here and know the names of all the proteins. That's just too difficult a question. Too few med students would get this right. So my suggestion to you is to spend about 20 minutes reviewing the lac operon, make sure you know the big picture, and then move on and forget about it. And don't worry about that super confusing question and trying to understand how you get the answer. It's just way too hard and not something that I think you'll ever see on the step exam. Okay, so what are the takeaways from this question? The first one I'd say is that if you come across a practice question that is extremely poorly worded and it's very difficult to even understand what they're asking, that is probably the fault of the question writer and not you. So don't spend too much time stressing over those questions. Get what information you can learn from it and then move on. The second takeaway is that the lac operon is pretty low yield. I would spend 20 or 30 minutes just knowing some general principles about it and then forget about it. It's very unlikely you're gonna see a lot of questions about that on your exam and I don't think it's worth spending a lot of time memorizing all the names of the genes and enzymes and other things that are part of the lac operon. And that concludes today's step one question review.